first song that we uh, sang at the beginning on uh, our song, number 501, uh, is a familiar one for most of us. And it's actually uh, one of uh, my favorites. Jesus, precious Savior, thou hast saved my soul from sin's foul corruption, made me fully whole. And of course, the tune that uh, the band, which I am familiar with playing in the band, and uh, certainly the tune that uh, Doreen would have used today to look it up for this song, is entitled Anything for Jesus. And the chorus of the, this particular song says, All my heart I give thee, day by day, come what may. All my life I give thee, dying in to save. And I believe that these words are very appropriate today as we begin our uh, 2022 self-denial campaign. And consider how important it is for us to give out of our abundance to those who are in need. And it really sums up what anything for Jesus means for those who choose to be his followers. And many of us, if not all of us here today, already know that the life of a Christian is one of sacrifice. But I'm not so sure that we really understand how much of ourselves we should give or what is really required of us. I just read from John chapter 12, verses 1 to 8 where we were shown the pattern of giving sacrificially. And I want us today to consider Mary's gift of sacrifice, and may we be challenged to reconsider what anything for Jesus means for our individual lives. Jesus was near the end of his life, and he knew that. And it was an act of courage for him to go anywhere near at the city of Jerusalem during the Passover time because there were people there who were planning to kill him. And there would have been so many people gathered in Jerusalem for the Passover festivities that even outside the city in Bethany, it was difficult to find a place to stay. And I think what's interesting to note is that there wasn't any room in Jerusalem before the birth of Jesus, and there was no room in Jerusalem before his death. Well, this story is certainly one about a gift of sacrifice. Well, you know, Jesus always had a place to stay in Jerusalem because he was always a welcome guest at Mary and Martha's house. They took great care of him. I can see Mary as a woman who had the gift of hospitality. And I'm sure she served Jesus a delicious meal and everything was as nice as she could make it. And this was her way of showing Jesus just how much she loved him. But Mary, Martha's sister, on the other hand, expressed her love for Jesus in a different way. And I think that she had the gift of worship. And she loved to sit at the feet of Jesus, listening to every word he said. It seems that she had been saving some expensive perfume for it. For this special occasion. And she felt that this was the time the time had come for her to use it. This pure nerve was a fragrant ointment imported from India, we read. And Mary took the jar and she broke it and she used all of it, not just a part of it, but used all of it to anoint the feet of her master. <coughs> Mary loved Jesus and she was devoted to his leadership and she was devoted to his teachings. And so this act of devotion was her way of giving the best that she had in her possession to Jesus. It seemed unusual, you know, to those in the house that day because Mary poured the expensive ointment on the feet of Jesus where normally it would be poured on his head. And then Mary used her hair to wipe his feet. She wasn't at all concerned that people were probably staring at her in wonder because I'm sure she must have been quite aware that women just didn't let down their hair in public. But that day it was evident that she thought of nothing or she thought of nobody, only Jesus. And that's why she lavishly poured out 
the expensive perfume that was worth a year's wages. You see, genuine worship for Mary never counted the cost. And for Mary, anything for Jesus meant the very best that she could give him. And so as Christians, let me ask today, have you ever made a sacrifice that equal to Mary's? As followers of Jesus Christ, there are sacrifices that we make from week to week. Maybe some of us sacrifice our time and energy in helping others or encouraging others by way of phone calls or messages or maybe you send cards or maybe you cook food and deliver it to those in need. But for Mary, she didn't just give him part of the jar of expensive ointment. She gave Jesus all of it. And Mary was willing to give anything for him. And God has called all Christians everywhere to make a sacrifice. But we must realize that anything for Jesus also means the very best that we have. We must sacrifice the very best thing for Jesus. You know, in the Old Testament, sacrifice meant gifts that, that cost and, and gifts that hurt. And we remember the story of Abraham in Genesis chapter 22 and how his faith was tested when he was asked by God to offer his son Isaac as a burnt offering. And we can almost picture that scene now. And Abraham was willing to sacrifice anything, even his son. But of course, God only required Abraham's obedience, and Isaac's life was spared because God had provided a ram as a substitute for Isaac. You see, back in the Old Testament times, only animals were sacrificed to show devotion and reverence to God and for repentance of sin. But those animals, they couldn't be just any old animal. They had to be the best of the flock or the herd. They had to be without flaw or blemish because this was the will of God. And so Mary chose the very best that she had to show her devotion and her reference to Jesus. She didn't use a half of her expensive ointment. I believe she broke the jar with the full intention to use every bit of it on the feet of Jesus. Luke 10 of 39 tells us that Mary sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. And I believe she had heard him many times talk about his burial, his death and burial. And she must have pondered upon this. And I wonder if at some point, if she, in preparation for his death, she had brought, bought this rare and costly perfume, and she hid it away. But then Lazarus had died suddenly. And unexpectedly, and spices were needed for his burial. Had Mary maybe been tempted to lavish her treasure on her brother's burial? I'd like to think that she bought this expensive perfume just for Jesus and, and was waiting for the right time to use it. Could that be why the house was filled with fragrance that day? You see, Mary's desire was to give the best that she had to him. And I think she was the type of person who would rather honor Jesus while he was still alive. The fragrance filled the whole house. Sort of evident that her love for her Lord filled the whole house. But everyone didn't see it that way that day. In Luke chapter 12, verses 4 to 6, we note a rather sour comment from Judas. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. And to be so extravagant in, in Judas' opinion was a waste, even though it had been given to the Lord. And so Judas was thinking like so many think today. Many think that money given to the Lord's work would be better spent on the material things of the world. But Mary was so different from Judas. Mary gave freely of all she had. But Judas, he took freely of all anyone had. John says in 12, verse 6, that 
Judas did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He was a keeper of the money bag, and he used to help himself to what was put into it. Unfortunately, anything for Jesus can not only mean sacrificing the very best thing, sometimes it means sacrificing any old thing for Jesus. Maybe that's the way Judas was thinking. I can remember talking to an old friend one day, and although he called himself a Christian, he was quite open and honest with me, and he felt he was not giving his best or doing his best for Jesus. He felt that in his Christian walk, he had reached a point in his life where any old thing would do. He saw his commitment to church attendance and playing in the band as sacrifice enough. He went on to say that taking the time to say grace for meals was more a ritual than meaningful. And he had to force himself to pray, and the prayers were usually finished abruptly or not finished at all because he fell asleep saying them. He played in the band, but his lack of practice showed in his playing. Here's an example of anything we'll do. And this was obviously the theme of his faith. And he knew that. Because he believed that all God required was commitment but no sacrifice. And so maybe there are those who are listening today who can identify with this theme. Anything will do. We feel that we are committed to Christ. But when he asks something of us that requires more than we're willing to give, then we hold back. And we do this because we are not willing to make a sacrifice. And that sacrifice may be our time, it may be our talents, it may be our money. The Chorus says, take up thy cross and follow me. I hear the blessed Savior call. How can I make? a lesser sacrifice when Jesus gave his all. Are we guilty sometimes of giving just any old thing? The book of Leviticus tells us to give the best that we have. He tells us to give the cream of the crop as a sacrifice to God. And if we are living a Christian life, we are required to give our best. And that means sacrificing anything for Jesus. Not just any old thing. And so when we think about our worship, do we sing from our heart or do we just mouth the words? Do we really understand the power that's in those words? All is well with my soul. Do our minds tend to wander when we pray or as we listen to others pray? Do we find ourselves rattling off a quick prayer each night because we are too tired or maybe we're unwilling and disinterested in pausing for some quality moments with God? Worship is hard work. And God is not satisfied with us when we give just any old thing. After all, he gave his best when he sent Jesus, his only son, to die on the cross for each one of us. And so do we have the attitude that the Christian faith is great if it costs me nothing? 2 Samuel 24, 24, David said, I will not sacrifice to the Lord my God burnt offerings that cost me nothing. And there's also a line of another song that says, How can I give to God that which costs me nothing? Does Jesus get the best of you and me? Or does he get much less? God gave us his very best. God gave us his only son. Can we give less? Will you give out of your abundance? Even as you consider South Denial appeal this year? Or will you give sacrificially? And there is a difference. <coughs>
God gave his best, his only son. Will we give anything for Jesus or any old thing for Jesus? And what will this mean for you? What will this mean for me? I pray that we will be challenged to give our best in every area of our lives. Because freely you have received, so freely give. Freely you have received, so freely give.